Hello everyone, are you ready for another adventure? It's me, Wokey, and I'm back with another fake Grand Order video. And what is today's video? We're going to be talking about the upcoming Gouda Gouda event that is expected to be coming on the 13th, but we don't actually know. Uh, we just know that there is a stream scheduled for the 13th, so a lot of people are assuming that after the stream it's going to be, um, released. But again, no idea if that's actually the real date. But yeah, I'm going to go over them, going to talk about what's going to be in the event, and that's it. That's going to be today's video, so let's go right into it. Uh, the Gouda Gouda Close Call. This is how it looked like on the JP side of the game. Uh, remember that you need to have cleared High and Kyo if you want to do this event. This event also does not come back. At least it's not going to come back for a while. Because um, usually <laughs> next year is where they decided to cut back on the reprints. I don't know why. Nobody knows why. For some reason they thought that, you know what, people really didn't like to have more events. Reprints of events. So we're just going to stop doing them. <laughs> It was very weird. I've never liked that decision, so it will be a while. So if you can't get Ranmaru X in this specific go-around, you're going to have to wait a little bit to get them. Uh, I think they haven't shown up on JP just yet, but I'm not 100% sure on that. But yeah, you need to have cleared High and Kyo. Um, if you are not anywhere near High and Kyo right now, I'm going to say right now your chances of actually finishing it in time, very low. Uh, best of luck, and... Yeah, if maybe if you're not able to get to do this event because you haven't been able to clear High and Kyo, I think it's best to actually just focus down and try and catch up to Lost Belt 6. Because the next event will require Lost Belt 6. Not the next event, but the the event near the end of December will require Lost Belt 6. So it's best that you just get caught up with the story now. Um, the story is very good, but it does take a lot of reading and a lot of fighting. So, yeah, best, best to take some time to the side and get that done anyway uh this is the event itself the unit that is going to be the free-to-play unit is the mysterious run maru x um they are the free one there were going there's going to be an iso costume related to it as well i think i can where is there we go we can start by looking at um run maru because they're actually very interesting uh <clears throat> this is mysterious run maru x uh, they are a Avenger with one quick two arts two buster. Their first skill is the Ronmaru Hand Humble Thyself B. Increases one ally's critical star absorption for one turn. Increases their critical damage for one turn. Removes their debuffs. Uh, 5,000 absorption. The crit damage is 50% and the cooldown is 4. Their, the, their second skill is the Ronmaru Eye. The Ronmaru Eye. Aren't they lovely, those eyes? A. 40% chance to charm all enemies for one turn, reduces their defense for three turns, and then gain 10 crit stars. The defense down is 20%, and the cooldown is of 6. And the third skill is the Ranmaru Strahl A, increases own arts performance for three turns, charges on MP gauge, and then gain 10 crit stars. 30% arts and 20% to NP, and a cooldown of 6. Their uh, passive skills are... The, Aveng uh, the Avengers uh, C rank, uh, Oblivion Correction E, Ran Ranmanium EX, Existence Outside of the Domain, Mag Magic Resistance, and Affection of the Demon King EX. Okay. And uh, their third append skill is an Anti-Caster Attack Damage Aptitude. And then their Noble Phantasm is the Orchard Rounds X, Ranmaru X, Rank C Arts, Anti-Army Noble Phantasm, that hits four times and then deals damage that ignores defensive buffs to all enemies. The damage is 450% at NP level 1. And because they are a free-to-play unit, you will be able to get them to NP 5. So the damage will actually be 750%. And then they also increase their own crit star generation rate for one turn. Uh, at charge level 1, it's 100%. And then finally, at the final charge level, it's 300%. And that is Run Maru X. Uh, they are extremely good. <laughs> they are a first of all, they are a they are a free to play AOE arts unit. So if you have Castoria, she, the, the they are gonna work perfectly together. Um, obviously, when you think of Avengers and you think of arts, you think of Space Ishtar. Uh, Ranmaru is not going to be on the same level as Space Ishtar, but no free-to-play servant is ever going to be on the same level as Space Ishtar. But that does not mean that they aren't usable, and the way that they are currently built, they are extremely usable. 
having four hits on an arts is very respectable. 750% damage should be enough for them to get some NP gain back. Uh, they have additional ways to getting increasing uh, NP generation rate. Yeah, see, so like the Ron Mania EX charges on MP gauge by 3%. It's not a lot, but it's enough. There's enough increase to arts performance as well. 3% here, 30% here. Um, they have a lot. They have a lot of ability to get 10 crit stars as well, which is pretty nice. If you ever get in a situation where they live the initial AOE and then you do additional damage, that should be enough to get them past the top but yeah the 20 percent mph that's perfect i think yeah this is a very very solid free to play unit i'm kind of i'm obviously biased because i really like aoe units because that makes grinding easiest so i will gladly accept anyone that's like that um and yeah for free to play avenger that's really if you look back to the um the adventure class because there's obviously there's two when you think of it i know i mentioned space star but there's also comma who literally came out and these two currently in na are top of their class in terms of uh i was gonna say buster farming that's dumb arts farming they're fantastic at it two of the best if you already have them obviously you're gonna keep using them but if you were unable to get space star or comma I think Run Mario will do perfectly fine as you're like, okay, I just need a generic beat stick for arts, and I don't have a Berserk, I don't have Musashi, I don't have anything, I'm getting something for free, that's perfectly acceptable, that's good, and yeah, that's the best you could hope for for a free-to-play unit, I'd say. Someone who's actually used- I think the, the best that you could actually hope for for a free-to-play unit is typically someone on the same level as... Uh, Shiki and Ryder Kintoki, where they're just so insanely good that you're just like loving life <laughs> the entire time you're using them. Um, and yeah, I think that's what you're gonna get with Run Maru X, at least based off what I can see there. Now let's go into the actual event. As always, I'll say that I usually don't look too into the um, event mechanics because I like to be kind of surprised, but I can t tell by looking at it just by the base basis here. It is a mission based event. And also, it has a hundred missions to it. Um, that sucks. I really don't like mission events. But that also means that you should stay on top of this as quickly as possible because these are very annoying, and they're always annoying. Uh, next, let's go to the summoning campaign. Uh, the actual like um, CEs that come in there are those eyes let uh, let none get away, blazing advers adversities. And Love Chaos, none of them are too crazy. Um, the 10 crit stars from Love Chaos is nice, but I also am... Um, if you're Typically, if you're going to get crit stars, I would just use Golden Catches the Carp. But if you, for whatever reason, don't have Golden Catches the Carp, I guess you could use this, and that's perfectly fine. Uh, I think there is Event CEs. There you go. There's the Geisha Dancing with Flowers. And then there's the two Craft Essence EXP cards. This one is a damage against demonic enemies and that will eventually turn into start battle with 50% uh, MP gauge. Which is pretty nice if you're fighting against specifically demonic enemies and you don't mind just taking 50% NP and that's enough for you to do your combo things. It makes it actually kind of usable. Uh, event, reward, uh, event reward command codes are the Demon Vice Commander. Critical damage 10% uh, up when 30% depending on remain HP on the engraved card. The Gentle Wish, if engraved on an Arts card, Star Absorption is up by 150%. And the Nobu Sengumi is if engraved on a Quick card, Critical Damage up by 15%. Uh, now we can go into the actual banner. We'll only go into banner 1, because banner 2 I'll talk about more when it's actually coming close to the ending. But this is these are the units that are going to be on banner 2. Uh, Ryoma, Demon King Nobunaga, Okita J. Soji, which is the Summer Okita, and then both Okada and is both Izo and Mori are going to be on the other banner as well. They're on this banner. I'm not going to go over crazy what Izo and Mori do, but I will say Izo is extremely good for a single target assassin. He is also a big fan favorite of the Fago community in general, and because of that, he gets a lot of support. Typically in the way of costume dresses, but even in his regular costumes are really nice. Like the regular outfits he has are really cool. And he always shows up for Guda Guda, but he is also limited. So your Guda Guda banners are really your best chance of getting him unless he just appears on a random like Japanese servant banner type of deal. 
Uh, Mori, I know a little bit less about. I'd like Mori in terms of the story stuff that he's done, but in terms of a unit, he is a berserker who actually wants to die. So if you're into the idea of using that type of unit, there you go. Your boy's Mori right there. Let's go into the two, um, for the one four star and the one five star. We'll go with uh, Nobunaga Summer. She is a berserker. She is a buster gorilla type kit. Uh, the active skill, which is three busters, one quick, one arts. Her active skills are Foolish Murder Style A, grants self-evasion for one turn, increases own buster performance for three turns. The buster up is 20% and the cooldown is of six. The second skill is the Atsumi Beat B, increases, uh, gains critical stars every turn for five turns. It covers party's HP every turn for five turns, and then charges party's MP gauge by 3% every turn for five turns. 10 star regen, HP regen is 500, and the cooldown is of eight. Third skill is the 6 Heavens Demon King of the Beach A-, increases own crit star absorption for one turn, ignore invasion for one turn, then increase own attack in the burning battlefield for three turns. 3000 absorption, the burning attack is 20% and the cooldown is a 4. The passive skill is the Madness Enhancement C. Her third skill is a Anti-Moon Cancer Critical Attack Chance Resistance, which I did not know was a thing that someone could have. And finally, her Noble Phantasm is the Rank E to EX, Nobunaga the Rock and Roll, the Papayas the Demon King of the Sixth Heaven, the Summer Fever. Uh, it is anti-divine, it hits 12 times, it is buster, it deals damage to one enemy, and it has a 500% chance to grant self the Burning Battlefield buff for 3 turns. If it is the unawakened version of it, it does not do that. Um, the damage is 800% at level 1, and it is uh, 12,000 at level 5. Her overcharge effect is deals damage to divinity enemies, which it's 150% at charge level 1, and then all the way at the final charge level it is 200%. And that is Nobunaga Summer. Uh, I really like Nobunaga Summer. Uh, she ends up becoming extremely useful if you're going to... I Actually, funny enough, in raids, the most recent Nobunaga raid is where it really felt like, oh yeah, damn, this unit is extremely just good. Um... For style events and raids, a lot of the time raids end up having divine enemies, so she ends up doing a lot of damage because of that, because she is anti-divine. <laughs> and because you are in a specific raid type scenario, the the, the biggest negative uh, that a lot of like single target berserkers have is that if they don't have guts, it means that they are basically useless in a lot of like challenge quest type stuff and even boss uh, story mode type of things. The reason is is that they will die, and Nobunaga has almost no protection in that way. She has a, a grant self-evasion for one turn that is tied to her buster performance uh, increase in attack. That is not, <laughs> is not going to save her from dying a horrible, horrible death. Neither is this slight healing that she has here. That's not going to save her in any capacity. But when you are specifically farming raids, that doesn't matter. So if you are fighting specifically against a raid boss who is divine, um... You can just put her on there and she will literally take them down real easy. That's, this is the unit I used for the most recent uh, Nobunaga raids that happened. And it was fantastic because she is three buster arts. She is very self-explanatory. She is gorilla, gorilla, go gorilla, hit buster, boom, 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 done. Very easy to do. And also, you'll be able to actually take advantage of this third skill after she uses her, no her Noble Phantasm. Because the cooldown is 4, if you're using it with Vich, it's possible for you to double stack the burning attack, so she will have 40% for a brief moment. And it's also kind of nice to ignore evasion. That doesn't always pop up, but it does come up occasionally on specifically some rates. It came up in the, um, the Nobunaga rates, funny enough. That's why I used her, <laughs> is because she actually ignored a lot of that, and so... It, was ma it made it very easy to kind of choose her and not have to think and just whittle down these bosses very easy. But yeah, anyway, that's Summer Nobunaga. I think she's really good. Next, we have Azuma no Okoni. I probably pronounced her name wrong. Before we start talking about this unit, I want to preface this by saying I've recorded this video twice now. The first time I recorded it, I felt I was too tired and I didn't think the video was good enough. Um, a lot of it came down to what I had to say about Azumu, uh, ok Okoni, oh, I don't know how to say her name, um, Okoni, Okoni, Okonu, Zan, okay, aka Zan, I'm just gonna call her Zan from now on, so, <clears throat> Zan, uh, I haven't heard anyone talk about her at all, in any capacity, not to say that she's bad, not to say that she's good, they just don't talk about her. There has been literally nothing said about this woman 
at all. <laughs> nothing that disparages her, nothing that promotes her, nothing that, like, nothing. I know nothing, like, there's nothing to base off of it, and I think it's kind of understandable when you look at the kit that she has. I even double-checked with my brother, he's like, have you heard anything about her? And he said, no, but I assume she's good. And yeah, so let's go into what she does. Um... So her first act, first of all, her kit, she is a caster. She has two quicks, one arts, two buster. Her first skill is an Arigato Mai B, increases her own attack, uh, increases own quick and buster performance for three turns, and then grants self an evasion for two attacks, three turns. The cooldown, not the cooldown, the, uh, the attack up is 30% for both quick and buster, and the cooldown is seven, which is huge. The Puppet Kagura A increases her own critical star absorption for one turn. Kiri says crit damage for one turn and grace, uh, grants self an attack. <clears throat> on attack, activated debuff for one turn. Inflicts defense down by 10% for three turns to enemies when critical attacking. The absorption is 1000 and the crit damage is 100% at uh, the final level and it is on a cooldown of 5. The third skill is the Shrine, Ma the Shrine Maiden of the Seal B+. Reduces one ally's skill cooldown by 1. Charges on MP gauge and then gains crit stars. The MP up is 50%, the stars gained is 15, and the cooldown is of 7, which is this ability is likely why her cooldown for the first and the third skill is so high. That's what I would assume. Uh, her passive skills are Territory Creation, Kagura C, Item Construction, Karakuri C, and the new Okonu, Okoni Kabuki EX. Um, her third append skill is an Anti Pretender Attack Damage Aptitude, and her Noble Phantasm. Oh, good, ready for this one. Is rank C Okoni, Ju Juhachi, Ban, Izumi, Aragami, Kabuki, Okoni, Repertoire, Kabuki of the Azumo, Wild God. It hits 10 times. Apologies for the butchering of that. It is a quick noble phantasm. It reduces one enemy's quick resistance by 20% for three turns. Activates first, which is good. Then it deals damage to them. The damage is 12,000 at level 1, uh, 1,200, and then at level 5, it's 2,000. <laughs> And then she has an overcharge effect, which is deals damage to demonic enemies. It is 150% at charge level 1, and it, at the final charge level, it's 200%. It's similar to Nobunaka Summer in that regards. And that is our girl over here, uh, Zan. So, first things first, I will say I always, I am a fan of someone that I've had like, the DPS caster. The idea of like having a single target caster to kind of get stuff done. Same thing goes for AoE. Not a lot of people like those typically. Uh, funny enough, I was talking to my brother about it, and then he did mention that one of the most recent units on JP is a DPS caster that broke the game. So <laughs> maybe people feel different about it now. But at least in the current state of uh, Fugo and A, um, um, and specifically in regards to this unit, you know, not. Not everyone is going to want this single target quick based caster. Like, her being quick based is also another, like, yeah, quick is already not in the greatest of spots on Fugo NA at the moment. Eventually, in summer, we are going to get another quick support of some kind, but it doesn't really move the stocks up of quick units all that much. Um, it does move up certain things. It does make it, it does help a little bit, but it's not the same level of arts and buster, at least I think of when I think of units. Um, and yeah, in general, not a lot of people want a single target caster. Um, even me, who likes single target casters, already have single target casters that I can do stuff with, both in arts and in buster, but none for quick, to be fair. So she does feel that kind of niche. And her skills that I've read here, they're not bad. They're actually balanced in a way to make use of the fact that she has a one ally skill cooldown by one type of effect. So if you use this on her, then that makes it so that this cooldown is now six, technically. This cooldown is now four, and this one is six, which is a little bit more reasonable than seven, which is pretty damn high. Um, the ability to charge on NP is a huge when it comes to quick servants, so that comes very nice. But yeah, in general, she just seems like a very solid unit. Just kind of like nothing about her seems like too... Nothing seems bad about her, other than if you're someone who just doesn't like single target casters. Um, 
and quick, then obviously this is not a unit for you, but she looks cool. Her giant robot dude in the back is cool, which I think is the Kabuki man. Yeah, he looks cool in the back, and that is typically enough for a lot of servants. Um, and yeah, that's really all I have to say about him. If you have more to say about her, feel free to tell me. I would love to hear it from someone who actually uses her, because in the entire research that I've tried to find something for her, <coughs> I found nothing. Uh, which is usually not a great sign of how a unit is typically doing. Even bad units will have people saying like, man, they really need this to be improved. She doesn't have anything. Like, she doesn't come up when people are like, oh yeah, it's strengthening season. Who's the unit that's gonna get the strengthening? She's not on like the list of dudes to buff up. Like, she's not a Gils de Reyes who is so bad that he needs so much help. She doesn't really need help. She just is designed the way that she's designed. <laughs> And that's kind of the end of it. For this event, I'm sure she's going to be amazing because she's going to have a huge attack bonus up. But once it kind of goes away, it's going to be very dependent on whether or not you have a demonic photo fight. I don't know, and that sounds like it might be a fun challenge. So if you're into the idea of challenges and stuff, I can see being into this unit. And yeah, uh, this is definitely one of the ones where it's like, I guess it's going to depend on how she is in the story itself. How I end up feeling about her and type of stuff. But that's the banner. Uh, should you summon on this, I would suggest waiting unless you're just a huge ass fan of uh, Zahn over here. If you are, then you know, go with God, summon for the girl that you want, and I wish you the best of luck. But with Thanksgiving coming up, I don't know, it's a little bit, with Melisane coming up in December, for if you want Melisane, for example, and even then, after that, it's New Year's, and then... I don't know, in general I feel like it'd be best to just start saving and doing, like, getting ready for that. Like, you should start preparing for that. Start thinking about whether or not you're going to be doing any of the summons in December or early January. Um, so that makes it so that this ends up being a pretty easy banner to skip for a lot of people, for the majority of people. Yeah, I think that's, that kind of comes down, that's what this is, but... You know, if you're summoning, feel free to tell me about it and tell me how you did as well. I'm always interested to hear about how people do in their summons. Uh, especially for this one, I'm really trying to think of who would summon on this and I, there's not- I, I do a lot of videos where I talk about things that are coming up. She- I don't think I've seen a single person in the two years since she's been released say, I can't wait to summon for her. It's kind of astounding, but to be fair, there are a couple of other units like that, but usually, typically, they are bad, or they are insane still. Just nothing for her. <laughs> I got nothing. But yeah, that's it. That's the end of the video, everyone. Thank you very much for watching. Um, if you liked it, feel free to leave a like and comment. It helps out the channel a whole bunch, and I do appreciate it. I do end up caring a whole lot about this, as you can tell, by the fact that I was like, this doesn't seem good enough, I need to redo it. So, I appreciate it if you would, uh, help out <laughs> and leave a like or comment, it does help. And yeah, that's the end of the video. I'll see you guys, if there's any big update from that live stream, I'll obviously do a video of it. But if there isn't, then hey, I'll see you guys when this actual event starts and I will... Well, no, actually, I need to finish High and Kyo myself, <laughs> but I'll finish that before the stream happens. I'll I'll have that done. I'm, like, literally on the last, like, last couple nodes, but I actually want to sit down and read it. And also, the new Yakuza game came out, like, a Dragon Guide in. Mm, it's unfortunate that they had to release all this stuff during the season of, like, a lot of cool games coming out. <laughs> it's made it very hard to read the story. But anyway, I digress. That's the end of the video, everyone. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out. And goodbye.